So, we will continue with this variation length curve. So, it is called V L curve and there are two types of variance length curve, it is one is called between length which is called uh, B L, another is within length is denoted as V L curve. So, B L V L curve and as the yarn cut length increases the between length reduces on the other hand as the cut length increases the variance within length increases. So, effectively the total variance is the summation of between length and within length. Okay. Now, we will see one practical numerical. The problem is here the nature of B L curve is given, it is a logarithmic curve, okay. So, which is m x plus c, where y is in uh, y is the variance that is a square of c percent and x is the log of cut length. Now, here although this is the shape of the curve, now we can form curve where y axis is in log. If we have the logarithmic value, then the curve will be typically it is a straight line curve. So, many manufacturer they have their program they have programmed it is in the logarithmic value, not in this form, but in the logarithmic value which which gives the straight line. So, B L curve is normally the in the log form. Okay. So, here it is a straight line with the x axis log of cut length and y axis is the variance okay. and the variance with 10 mill centimeter cut length and 1 meter cut length are 49 and 36 respectively that is given. Now, with this variance okay. now the thing is that what is the actual problem? It is very practical problem here. Now, we know that this is the B L curve, it is a length cut length, eh? but if you take the cut length in logarithmic form, normally we get we get the printout in the logarithmic form. and B L. So, this curve will be like this, okay. this is the curve and the in the instrument they give this type of printout not this type of printout this is the printout. Now, looking at this here the problem is that at certain cut length. So, at 10 centimeter cut length here the B L value so, 10 centimeter cut length. So, B L value is say here it is given 49. So, this is 49 and at say 1 meter cut length here it is a 10 centimeter and this is say 1 meter cut length the B L is 36. Now, looking at this curve, two points are given. Can we predict the value of u percent? So, we have this two data only, and we have the nature of curve. Now, can we predict what will be the u percent of this yarn? That is the problem, okay. that is our, our problem here. Now, 
with respect to what will be the approximate u percent of the yarn when it is tested in even nest tester. Now, from V L curve we can try to predict the approximate u percent. Now, this is the V L curve and from V L curve the variance equal to m log 10 cut length okay, plus c that is the equation it is given and v is nothing but c v percent. Okay. From given conditions the 49 is the variance m with a <coughs> cut length of 10 centimeter plus c. So, m plus c log 10 is 1. So, m plus c equal to 49 and for 1 meter cut length 1 meter means 100 centimeter 36 m log 100 plus 6 equal to 2 m plus c. From this two equation we can measure the we can get the value m and c. So, by solving this equation m equal to minus 13 and c is 62. Now, problem is that we have to see the evenness tester as we have already mentioned in last class in evenness tester the u percentage is given where the cut length is 1 centimeter. So, can we measure the variance for 1 centimeter cut length? Yes, we know the equation. So, this is the an Euster evenness tester cut length is 1 centimeter approximately we can we want to calculate. So, V equal to C V percent equal to M log 1 plus C is 62. So, log 1 means 0. So, it is becoming 0. So, it will be 62. So, C V percent C B square is 62, we can calculate the C B percent, it is a under root 62, the 7.687 percent is the C B percent with the cut length 1 centimeter. And if we want to know the U percent, then it will be C B percent by 1 to 1.25. So, the yarn will have approximate u percent 6.23 percent. So, from B L V L curve from V L curve we can actually predict the value of Ustad percent. Okay. So, we can get the two points and from there we can always calculate. Okay. Another way of expression of variability is called deviation rate. Deviation rate it is nothing but it indicates the ratio of total length of yarn irregularity. This is the definition it is a it is a ratio of total length of yarn irregularity that means, this is the yarn irregularity plot okay, mass per unit. Now, here we have certain reference length like what we tell the dr percent of 50 percent and more. So, this is the yarn. So, this is the mass per unit length which is 50 percent more plus more 50 percent or more than the mean mass per unit length. This line has been plotted, we can have different range. So, 75 percent we can have or 30 percent we can have. This dotted lines are say 50 percent plus 50 percent. So, more than 50 percent what is the total length of the yarn? This length this T 1 length is the length of the yarn which is more than 50 percent of the which that length of yarn which is having which is having 50 percent or more 
mass per unit area, mass per unit length. This length and here d2 length, this length having the mass which is plus 50 percent or more, d3 length, d4 length, this is the actual length of the yarn where it is actually the mass is more. Now, physically if we see Suppose this is the mass mean 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 plus minus plus 50 percent and above. This length is mean plus minus plus 50 percent and above. So, this length is actually measured, this is D1. Another portion here, this length D2. this length is having mass plus 50 percent. In this way, we will keep on adding d 1 plus d 2 plus d 3, only those lengths portion of yarn, length of those portions of yarn, where the mass per unit length is more than 50 percent. This we are adding we have added then it is divided by the total length of the yarn tested. So, this gives uh, an, an unique idea of the physically what will be the defect, how the defect will look like. Okay. So, this is one parameter and determined on the basis of the yarn irregularity signal averaged over certain, certain length, small reference length which exceeds the preset length. We have to set the preset. Suppose I want stricter norms. So, instead of 50 percent we may call it at 40 percent. What is the effect or may be 60 percent at different le level we can calculate and it is on the total length of yarn tested. So, d r percent it shows the correlation with the evaluation by naked eye. So, it shows the actually the appearance from this value d r percent higher d r percent means the yarn actually looks look total that uh, total unevenness looking will be there actual appearance of the fabric will be patchy fabric okay so that it gives idea dr percent will give idea the type of look the fabric will give the other like your u percent will not give this idea which u percent will only give the okay this fabric will be uh, having inferior look, but this d r percent will give the total idea of the, the thick portion which will come up in the appearance. Now, we will see another way of measurement of unevenness, it is a photoelectric method. When a beam of light is directed onto a photoelectric cell, an electric current is produced okay that's the um, technique we have seen earlier also for other uh, type of measurement the magnitude of the current is proportional to the intensity of light falling on it and if the path of the light is cut off by the yarn roving or sliver the current flow will vary depending on the thickness or diameter of the yarn so it it doesn't may measure the mass variation, it measures the diameter variation. So, this is the technique here, here this is the light source, lens arrangement is there, this is the slot is there and yarn is passing through this 
and depending on the diameter of the yarn, the light will pass through this and it is in the photoelectric cell, this will detect the amount of light which is proportional to the, the diameter of yarn and as the yarn moves, this will record the variation in diameter. So, we can see here by this animation. So, light is moving through and it is without any material. So, this is there is no material it is there now it is material is there the material is flowing that is moving okay. yarn is moving and then light is falling on it okay. photo electric sensor will sense the amount of light which is proportional to the diameter of the yarn as yarn moves the, the diameter varies at different location different position and so it is showing the current variation and that will get um, that we can actually plot this variation which is proportional to the variation in yarn diameter. Okay. So, this is the type of plot we can get this is the plot we can get. So, this is showing the variation in diameter and then we can calculate the variability. Next is that another optical method which is infrared method Zweigel's G 580 model which is actually it is optical method of determining the yarn diameter and its variation and the instrument consists of two IR transmitter of in identical in nature and identical receivers will be there and one of through one the ray okay, the yarn will pass it will be blocked uh, partially and the it will be compared with the reference uh, receptor this is the here the same infrared light of same intensity is passing through the two receivers are there. In one receiver this is the reference receiver and this is the actual receiver it is giving I 1 the actual the intensity of light it is getting here I 2 and the I 2 value is less than I 1 because it is partial it is blocked by the yarn and the difference will show the actual yarns diameter variation. So, this is the simple technique here. This the same intensity light two light beams are going one is yarn is blocking here. Now, yarn is moving and it is the moving yarn depending on the diameter variation it is giving the plot. Okay. So, intensity of this beam is compared with that measured by the reference receiver and difference in intensity is measured it is a measure of yarn diameter okay. and that the optical method is claimed to be nearer to human eye in the way it sees the fault okay. and capacitance method it feels the fault. So, that is how we have discussed earlier that the positive and negative points of the for of this two methods here it is claimed that this value here whatever evenness value we are getting it is directly reflecting the, the actual uh, appearance of the cloth. 
Next is that the yarn fault classification. Although the principle is same as that we have seen the R capacitance type of method, but here we do not measure the thick, thin or nebs. Thick, thin nebs are actually inherent nature, inherent characteristics of yarn. This thick, thin nebs we cannot eliminate, we cannot take out from the yarn because they, those are very frequently occurring. We cannot, we can only try to minimize those faults, but the there are another type of faults which are in larger dimension where these faults are not due to the inherent nature of the material or inherent problem in the machine setting or other things, but these are due to some external mainly due to some external reason for some, but due to some major machine faults. Okay. This can is these are not at all acceptable at least some major faults we have to remove. These are called objectionable fault the yarn imperfections which have greater than the size more than 100 percent of the mass and longer in length or both are called as at the classified as the faults, but the imperfections are less than that okay. and the length wise imperfection are smaller. Okay. Imperfections are more frequent while faults are seldom events, faults have greater impact on performance of yarn or appearance of yarn. Faults are classified in different groups okay. like uh, imperfections we classify in thick, thin, nebs even thick or different percent. So, here also it classifies at different group, but in fault we along with the diameter or mass per unit length we classify in terms of length of the fault okay. based on the requirement of some of them can be removed in the winding operation okay, by using clearer. So, there are different models different manufacturers are there of this type of classifier. So, Worcester Classimet 2 which is older version it has got 23 categories of fault. These are the categories starting from A 1 to D 4 these are called thick faults. Okay. These are called thick or slab A B C D okay. these are basically this shows the length of the fault okay. like 1 uh, centimeter, 2 centimeter, 3 centimeter, 8 like these are the length of the fault and le levels 1, 2, 3, 4 are the diameter or mass per un percentage the mass per unit length. Okay. The like A 1 means the fault which is having 1 cent up to 1 centimeter length and plus 100 percent that means, 2 times of the mean mass per unit length. Whereas, A 4 means the thickest among A group that means, any length up to 1 centimeter and its mass per unit length is plus 400 percent that means, almost it is 5 times of the mass. So, it is a very thick fault. Okay. Similarly, if we go right way B C D the length will be increased. So, D 4 means the length is up to 8 centimeter and that is that long 8 centimeter long and diameter is so the mass per unit length is 5 times of the average. So, this and E is called long slab. Okay. Here the length is between 8 to say 
8 and above this is the length. So, very long slough this is highly objectionable fault and short uh, uh, thin faults are like f f 1 f and g are the thick fault, but they are not that thick in the in terms of mass per unit length, but they are long thick faults. These are f and g are long thick fault and h 1 h i 1 are long thin faults and h 2 i 2 are long thin faults, but the diameter or mass per unit length is much less. So, if we see the severity of fault is E is the actually it is a very thick fault and I 2 is very thin fault. If we see the if we tell the which the question if we ask which fault is responsible for breakage in subsequent process this will be definitely I 2 H 2 this will be maximum this will be the reason for the breakage which fault is responsible for um, very high slab appearance E fault or D fault or C fault. So, if we see the objectionability objectionable faults are either very thick or very long faults these are objectionable fault and we can identify this A 4 B 4 C 3 C 4 D 3 D 4 these are actually objectionable faults because these are either thick or these are longer faults. E is always objectionable. Okay. So, A 4 B 4 C 3 C 4 D 3 D 4 they are objectionable faults and if we try to have some stricter norms if we want to have better quality and we and these faults these faults can be removed in the in row in a winding process and here we have to also see the number of breakage in the in uh, winding because one break means we are introducing one fault also we have to splice. So, if we want to have stricter norm then in that case A 3 B 3 C 2 D 2 can be A 3 B 3 C 2 and D 2 can also be considered objectionable fault. So, these are the you can add. So, we can keep on adding the fault if we even if we can think the A 2 B 2 we can add that we can do, but at the same time we have to consider the pre efficiency in the winding, because the number of faults are increasing these are in cumulative form. So, A 4 num number of A 4 faults are much less than A 3 and A 3 is much less than A 1. So, A 1 A 2 they are large number. Okay. So, if we consider to remove A 2 even then the number of stoppage of the uh, particular working head will be very high and number of cut number of splice will be very high that will affect actually indirectly adversely that will affect the quality. Okay. So, that is why we have to decide which what type of faults we have to uh, we have to um, remove we may think okay we will work with b4 c4 d4 d3 then it's fine so in that case number of stoppage will be less and the d h1 h2 we can so i1 i2 you can see which one we can remove so so long thick faults E and G are objectionable, objectionable. So these are objectionable. We can always remove. So E we cannot always. Have. We we can always. We have to remove these faults. And thin faults H1, H uh, H2, I1, I2, H2, I1, I2. These are objectionable faults. These are more critical because they cause breakage during further process. Okay. 
they also show up in thin lines in this fabric. So, we have to remove these faults. The objectionable faults are cleared by Ian clearer. So, Ian clearer is set and there are some settings we can set the what type of faults we want to clean. Okay. And classimate 3 next model which is actually where instead of 23 types categories they have actually classified in 33 categories that we can always do this is only matter of software. Okay. We can always classify in more and more because we have data we have once we are getting data in the from the capacitance type sensor we can always do like another tester which is called Kiyosaki classifold. There it classifies 40 different categories. So, it is simply the num this is simply the software we can keep on adding the variability okay, different labels. The basic principle is same. So, another instrument which is electronic inspection board. So, where it sends it measure in Lawson Hempel instrument where it actually works in photoelectric principle and objective method of grading the yarn appearance. It stores the data yarn diameter data and automatically form the yarn board without as we have seen the yarn board wrapping it will automatically form the yarn board and it will compare with the standard. So, we do not have to do anything yarn is run and scanned between the light source and the camera at a rate of 2 scans per millimeter when running at the speed of 100 meter per minute. So, information from the camera is digitized and transmitted to the computer. Yarn profile program produces a profile image of the yarn as well as the graph of variation of the diameter. So, this profile program is there and inspection board program is there the two types of programs one can have. So, automatically it will form a yarn board and it will automatically be graded yarn appearance board. So, we do not have to do anything with the standard grade. So, after that we will just try to finish quickly. So, we can also measure the evenness or faults online. So, whatever things we have discussed or basically these were actually the offline techniques. We have to take the yarn or material from the machine and test offline, but there are techniques like in Slafforst the Coro lab that rotor spinning machine there they have fitted the optical sensor with each and every end each and every rotor actually rotor uh, box okay. and measure the variability of yarn online and immediately it gets signal in the central processor and detects the fault online okay. and identify the which machine is producing the problem. Earlier methods what we have done it was basically it is a post mortem we, had, we already yarns have been produced we are make we are getting the values and try to rectify for next process. But this type of online process is actually it is very useful so that we can get online immediate we can rectify the problem. Uster polygard is also there which works on the, the capacitance principle and it gives the information on variability. So, with this we have come to the end of the session evenness. Okay. In next session we will discuss the other parameters.
other parameters means we have all com completed the fiber, we have completed fabric, yarn and now we will see few test methods, few testing techniques for fabric. Okay. Till then goodbye, thank you.